All right, with that, let's call a money huddle and bring in today's panel for more discussion about this. Kelly Sadler is here with us. She's back, communications director for America First Action. Also joining us now is the CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Melissa, great to have you with us. Kelly, thank you for staying with us. So let's start with this uh, Disney SEC report. They now acknowledge this. We'll put the quote on the screen. Uh, we face risks relating to the misalignment interesting choice of word there, with public and consumer taste and preferences for entertainment, travel, and consumer politics. Melissa, uh, put this into plain speak for us. What did Disney just admit there? Well, they can admit all they want. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to change the types of movies that they're going to put out, because if they really wanted to, they would have a while ago. You're not going to please all audiences. I think the problem with Disney is the stock's been down this year, but it's really been down way before this year. Once they started fighting with DeSantis and putting certain propaganda out, I think that caused a problem for them well over two years ago. The last time Disney was at brand new all-time highs was 2021. And again, considering how bullish the market has been this year in 2023, Disney is really lagging. Disney is under $100 a share right now today and has been for most of the year. So they're like 50% off their previous highs, which again was more than two years ago. And considering again how strong the market has been for 2023, that is not a good sign for Disney. And overall, they've got to get people spending money going to the parks. That's a big revenue a stream for them as well. When you have all these platforms out there that are creating special content, you have Netflix, again, is one of these people that is up against Disney for creating content. It's really hard for Disney to compete in these spaces unless they have a niche. And the niche for Disney has always been the kids stuff. And they've just gotten mm -hmm. away from it. And they've been losing money, actually, since they bought ESPN. ESPN is a negative on their balance sheet for them. They, in fact, they lost less money on carrying ESPN in the last quarter, it was down from a billion to like 400 million of a loss, but they've lost money carrying over some of these purchases that they've made also in the last few years. Yeah, you have to wonder about what's gonna happen with, with this massive corporation, Disney. Uh, there's a new football deal for the SEC and ABC and Disney next year. Uh, and I will say this, Kelly, Disney Plus tried to get me. I got an advertisement saying that Disney Plus was the one place I should go to get all of my Indiana Jones movies, the old ones, though not the ones that Bob Sellers was talking about, the new ones. Those are bad, but Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But the problem is, if that's what Disney is going to try to get me, I already own those movies. I've already owned digital copies of those movies. So what is the niche now for Disney? I used to, we used to be season uh, pass holders, my family and I. The one thing that Disney can offer us, this family values, Mickey Mouse, the old school values that we grew up with, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I do have Disney Plus, but I'm thinking about ending it. And the reason that I got Disney Plus was because of their library, because of all of the movies that I went to as a child. I wanted to share those with my boys. But now you're seeing, you know, the content in these movies is progressively more woke. Um, it's, you know, about minority, you know, heroines, you know, raging against the patriarchy. And the patriarchy is usually the evil guy is usually a white male, right? You have these elderly. LGBTQ themes that, quite frankly, parents don't want to have to explain to their three and their five-year-olds. Um, and you had that in Lightyear, you know, the movie that came out there in a strange world uh, that came out this year as well. So at the theme parks, you're seeing them have gay pride parades and celebrate, you know, gay pride month. And those are things, those are elements of that's not the Disney brand. That's not what parents feel comfortable, uh, you know, introducing to their children in these parks. And, you know, the economy has rebounded. People are traveling again. And I think it speaks volumes that park attendance is not up in 2023 when we're seeing a resurgence, you know, in the you know travel industry and in the, you know, leisure market. Yeah, the prices, too, at Disney are just completely out of control. And there were two things that made me feel really old this weekend when I was looking at this story, ladies. Number one, we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of Frozen, that release. Number two, remember when we used to, we were told in the old Disney advertisements that if you did not buy this VHS copy of Pinocchio right now, you're never gonna be able to see the movie again. You guys remember those, those advertisements? Absolutely. What does Disney have to offer us in that type of way, that, you know, the special offer, that niche that Melissa talked about? Well, well, we'll keep asking that question as Disney's stock price continues to suffer. All right, ladies, great to see you both. Stand by. Kelly and Melissa are coming back. Let's welcome back Kelly Sadler and Melissa Armo to talk more about this. 
All right, again, uh, due process here. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But if this is in fact true, my question, Melissa, is this. You would think that there'd be some sort of background check in place to prevent someone like this from getting the job in the first place. This is the federal official in charge of all of the Defense Department schools. Yikes. First of all, typically predators look for jobs where they would be close to children. I don't know if you remember the story, I'm sure that you do, about Penn State with Jerry Sandusky, which was a number of years ago, which was a really yeah. black state for uh, Penn State University and unfortunately for Joe Paterno, who was loved by many, many Penn State alumni. So, I mean, and again, Sandusky was a coach. So typically predators look to find jobs where they can be next to children to prey on those children and become trusted by those children and vulnerable who are vulnerable because they're young, because they're children in those types of positions where they look up to them in positions of authority. So I'm not sure re really background checks they could have found on this man. I'm not sure if it really was the Pentagon's fault necessarily, but again, good job for them to find this guy, get this guy, get him undercover, prosecute him to the full extent of the law, and they need to work more in these things. Every time I hear another story like this about pedophile stuff, I just cringe, you know, and I'm not a parent, but obviously it's a horrible, horrible, horrible thing, death penalty for all these people that do anything that's associated. Let me get to, uh, Melissa, I hate to cut you off, but I want to give 30 seconds here to Kelly to comment on this as well, Kelly. I guess the other thing, too, that this shows us is just how prevalent this sex trafficking is. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, if he's found guilty, he should definitely be fired by the Pentagon. He should not be able to work within the U.S. government again. But this, the U.S. sex trafficking is a huge, huge problem, and especially with the open borders that we're seeing. Under the Biden administration, yep. 85,000 children have been lost uh, within the interior uh, United States, likely sex traffic. And, you know, the United States is the number one consumer of this sex, sexually explicit material. We are the market for it. And this man was one of the perpetrators. He could have been one of the perpetrators and needs to be held accountable. Kelly and Melissa, great to see you both. Thanks for joining us here on John Bachman. Now we'll talk to you both real soon.